Hi, now it's time to reveal the weak axiom of revealed preferences, or at least take a peek at it. The objective of this podcast is to define the weak axiom of revealed preferences, better known as WARP, and identify violations of WARPs. Economists like sound logic. While the principle of revealed preferences seems like a solid start to explaining the shape and direction of consumer preferences, it doesn't tell us all we want to know about consumer choice maximization. It falls short in clearly defining when consumers are not maximizing their behavior. It isn't that we think consumers will not maximize their behavior. There are many times when issues with information or choice set availability are not clear to the consumer or the economist studying them. Economists have developed the weak axiom of revealed preference or warp to test when consumers are fully revealing their preferences. Here is the warp definition. If a set of goods, X1 and X2, is directly revealed preferred to another set, say Y1 and Y2, and the two bundles are not the same, then it cannot happen that then Y1, Y2, or the other second bundle, is directly revealed preferred to X1, X2. So, what does this mean in common language? Let's say a consumer really loves apples compared to bananas at least. Bananas just seem sort of plain and ordinary compared to a good, sweet, juicy apple. When the price of apples is high, such as in this graph, where apples are represented by X1 and bananas X2 is low, and a basket that includes all of the apples and bananas that a person can afford, and that person who loves apples, and maybe a few bananas, then they fill into their basket to round things off after they've bought all the apples they can afford. Then their consumption will look like this. Everything within the feasible set, but below X1, X2, is less preferred because it doesn't have as many apples and has too many bananas for the consumer. Now assume market prices change, but you are still making the same income, so income is held constant. The price of apples may decline, perhaps, and then the price of bananas increase, but remember the income is staying the same. You will have a new price line and feasible set that is now overlaid on top of the old physical set, something like this. If you really like apples and they are more affordable, then you will want to consume more and move away from bananas. You may choose the new consumption bundle Y1, Y2 in this case. This is logical as your preferences are moving in the same direction as apples and away from bananas. What would not not make sense is if you didn't take advantage of more apples when they were cheaper. In this case, the X bundle is purchased when the Y bundle is not affordable. Later, the Y bundle is purchased when the X bundle is not affordable. This is the logic under underlying the warp. We can use demand and price information to check and make sure consumers are following warp. So, in other words, we can systematically test for warp. We can do this using observations on bundles of goods they purchase at different prices. Suppose a set of goods with the prices, I have them listed below here in this area down here, where we have the set of prices are represented by P1 to the T and P2 to the T, to the T where T represents the teeth, teeth choice observation. And we have them as X1 to the teeth and X2 to the teeth, where X, those are the choice maids made for the teeth choice observation. Suppose that we observe the choices made in this right two columns, given the prices listed in the middle two columns over here under the prices. This should actually be P2 right here, not P1. Now, try to think about, given these prices and the choice information above, what would be the consumer's expenditure in each one of these observations? I give you this blank matrix to try to start thinking about it and filling it in. You might first think about the diagonal element right here, the first column in the first row, the second column, second row, and third column, third row. What would be the expenditure in those cases? 
This would be what is did the this consumer spend when they bought the first set of bundles choices at the first set of price for that choice. Then you can also think about alternatives. What if they wanted to buy their second choice bundle at the first cho choice prices? What would those look like? I want you to take a minute and think about that. While you do that, I will sing the hand washing, washing song. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear student, happy birthday to you. So think about what is the cost in row two and column one of the matrix. So let's see, that would be row two, row two, column one, right over here. Did you come up with four? That would be two times one and one plus one times two. If we fill in the rest of the matrix, we have one that rep is represented by Varian in table 7.2. I wanted to include that intermediate step so you're sure to follow the logic he went to from the first set of price and good choice information to this final matrix. Now we are prepared to conduct our warp test. To determine what bundles are weakly preferred, we will compare what budget expenditure for bundles may, might be for bundles other than those chosen. The chosen bundles are represented by the diagonal matrix entries. How do we see if one bundle is a preferred to another? Look at the bundles across the third row on the bottom. The consumer may have chosen X1 to the third and X2 to the third when the prices were P1 to the third and P2 to the third. But it would be more affordable if they could have bought other bundles such as X1 to the first and X2 to the first or X1 to the second and X2 to the second. The cost of each of these bundles would be $3 instead of $4. Yet, the consumer chose X1 to the third and X2 to the third. Therefore, because they were still willing to pay more to get that third bundle, we say bundle three is referred to revealed preferred to bundles one and two. This principle will come in handy when you're doing your smart work homework this week. You may read chat pages 127 to 129 for more scenarios around warp. The most important points to remember from this vodcast are: we assume people's behavior is constant, consistent. Just because prices change doesn't mean their preferences do. That's the heart of the weak axiom of revealed preference, or warp. And also, you can systematically test the weak axiom of revealed preference if you have consumers' choice outcomes and price information for different decisions. So that's the wrap-up on warp. And here's your positive message for the day. I look forward to seeing you online soon.